Hey guys, today I want to talk about these. These are all camera shotgun microphones. Today we're gonna to be talking about five different microphones at varying prices, and we're gonna find out which one is the best value for you. So with these microphones, we're gonna quickly go over what's in the box, any physical differences, and the specific feature set each offers. After that, we're gonna get right into the audio test with some vlog testing. We're gonna do some indoor test and some voiceover scenarios as well and seeing if these microphones are useful for stuff like that too. I think this is gonna be well over 10 minutes, so I'm gonna have the timestamps available for this video. Alrighty, let's quickly go over each microphone and what you get in the box. All of them comes with the microphone itself, a dead cat of some form, and an audio cable. The two cheapest out of the bunch comes with a foam windscreen as well. DD and Rode does not include a cable for smartphones. My iPhone does not have a headphone jack, so I can't immediately test that, but I'm gonna assume it works. I'm gonna take their word for it, pretty much. Man, the Movo even comes with a carrying case, and the Andy Cine has an extra Ryko mount. Although I don't see myself using these accessories, it's nice to see that they've included this in such a low price point. Now that we've quickly gone over what's in the box, I'm gonna talk about what makes each microphone special. So this is the Andy Cine M1. It's the cheapest out of the bunch, it's $29. I've seen it even cheaper on Amazon. I'll have the links down below. Um, yeah, you could buy three of these and it would be cheaper than getting one of these, the MKE 200 from Sennheiser. So this is great to just toss it into your backpack. Uh, you know, it's not too much of worry or a stress if you somehow lose it or break it. And uh, it's an excellent use of a backup microphone as well. The Movo VXR10 Pro has this one special feature and is that it has a headphone jack for monitoring audio, which is so useful for like camera operators. You know, you could actively monitor your audio. I know that a lot of cameras still doesn't have like a headphone jack. Um, so having an option like this is crazy, you know? My a7 III does have headphone jack, so I'm not gonna really use this, but that's a really nice option to have. So this is the Rode Video Micro. It's pretty much the OG. It came out in 2015, so it's well over five years old now. Um, and it's been super popular ever since. It's the pretty much the pioneer of this whole on-camera compact shotgun microphone. Uh, that we see today. Uh, it's $59, so it's pretty much the middle of the bunch, and it's, you know, the most standard microphone out of this whole competition as well. One little thing is that I like this, like, the little grooves that this uh, bottom screw-in offers, so for this, you could just, you know, put it in like that, so it's like, let me see, come on, focus. Okay, so you could look, now stick it in, right? And it's less shake. So this compared to this. The Deity VMic 4 Duo is very interesting at $89 retail. So this thing has two microphones, one front facing and one back facing. So because of that, there's two windscreen, two little windscreens. <laughs> These are pretty cute, not gonna lie. But yeah, this has two audio capsules. So one front facing and one back facing. So the camera operator or the person holding the camera can input their own opinion, their own voice when they're recording, which is so dope, so useful for like content creators and YouTubers and vloggers and stuff like that. Uh, it records on two audio channels and if you wanna utilize this, you just have to pull the second audio channel and you got it. And another cool thing is that it even has a microphone output in this. So there's a switch up top that allows you to switch between two modes. And if you want to utilize just the front microphone, you could totally just do that. And if you want to use the back microphone or the second input, you just switch to that mode and boom, you could connect a wireless lavalier to this and you have two options to choose from, which is insane. So for demo purposes, I have the DD mic connected to the Tascam audio recorder and I have the Comica wireless system connected to the DD. And now I have this dual audio system. So it's also recording from the lavalier and from the DD microphone from the front capsule. So which is great, right? So uh, I'm gonna put this onto my clip. And right now I could choose between using that microphone 
or the lavalier microphone that's clipped onto my shirt so like I could roam freely and stuff like that. This gives you a whole range of possibilities which is so cool. Uh, you know, like you could use this for capturing interviews and having a backup audio or a roll or backup audio. It's cool. Nice. Nice deity. So this is the Sennheiser MKE 200. It comes in at $99. It's the most expensive out of the bunch. But the first thing I noticed is that how compact and tiny this is, you know, compared to other microphones. Look how compact and tiny this is. It's really cool. And the cool thing is that this whole capsule is a windshield. So it has a built in windshield and the Ryko system that keeps everything else stabilized in these other cameras. That system is built in in the microphone as well. So this is already stabilized, you know, which is so cool. And if you want extra wind protection, there's a dead cat available as well. Also, you uh, plug in from the front the cable. So the cable doesn't get away of the monitor or anything like that, which is pretty cool. And you have to screw it in. So it gives you that extra sense of protection. But to be honest with you, like I've never encountered a scenario where my cable was like yanked off during recording or anything close to like that. So I feel like this like screwing is a bit unnecessary. And to be honest with you, it's kind of a little bit annoying to just like having to screw this in every time you use this, you know, but uh, cool safety. Oh yeah, this uh, comes with a cloth bag as well. Yay. Alrighty, now that we have a good sense of idea of what each microphone is like, we could finally move on to the audio test. And by the way, I am right now using the Audio-Technica ATA75R connected to the Focusrite Scarless Solo setup. It's a sub $300 audio setup. Um, I really do advise you using headphones during this portion of the test so you could really notice the difference of each microphone. Hey guys, so now I am officially vlogging. This is a, this is a totally fake vlog. I, I don't even know how vloggers usually do this. Um, nowadays, there's not even a lot of vlog channels popping off on YouTube. I feel like that whole vlogging um, era was like 2016 through like 2018, especially with Casey Neistat and stuff like that. But nowadays, no one really vlogs, you know? You know, 2020 is hell of a year. You know, I think we could all agree that, um, especially when we were in January or February, our lives were so fucking normal. We had no idea what we had in store for our year, but that's what it is. It is what it is, right? So I'm just making a quick loop, you know, fake vlogging uh, around my neighborhood. This is the deity. So this is literally my second vlog. I just gotta say, whoever, the people who do daily vlogs, um, you know on a daily basis of course people who do daily vlogs I don't know how the fuck you make your life so interesting every goddamn day cuz I wake up um, You know I do my normal morning routine. I get to work edit some videos Eat lunch Have a normal fucking day. Well during the pandemic. There's literally not much to do so I'm pretty sure vloggers are struggling right now, especially like content creators like David Dobrik uh, make sure to follow me on Instagram, by the way. Um, I'm a huge Instagram influencer now. I'm a huge TikTok star. Uh, this is my life. I live in LA. So, man, what a glorious day of being an influencer. This is so fun. Man, holding, holding a camera in front of me and people are watching me, but no, I don't care. This is the last microphone that I'm on. Um, and I've been doing these vlogs for like 10, 15 minutes and I have completely ran out of things to say. I'm so sorry, cause I thought about being a fake vlogger. I thought about um, how the struggles of vlogging. Do I talk about random things now? Or what do I say during these, like when the camera is on? How do people, yeah, exactly. Like how does David Dobrik, and I don't know, man. Whenever we meet someone for the first time, whenever we interview someone for a job, whenever we react to a new idea, whenever we're faced with making a decision quickly and under stress, we use that second part of our brain. How long, for example, did it take you when you were in college to decide how good a teacher your professor was? A class? Two classes? 
a semester, the psychologist Nalini Ambity once gave students three 10-second videotapes of a teacher with the sound turned off and found they had no difficulty at all coming up with a rating of the teacher's effectiveness. Then Ambity cut the clips back to five seconds and the ratings were the same. They were remarkably consistent even when she showed the students just two seconds of videotape. Then Ambity compared those snap judgments of teachers' effectiveness with evaluations of those same professors made by the students after a full semester of classes, and she found that they were also essentially the same. A person watching a silent two-second video clip of a teacher he or she has never met will reach conclusions about how good that teacher is that are very similar to those of a student who has sat in the teacher's class for an entire semester. That's the power of our adaptive unconscious. In understanding successful people, we have come to focus far too much on their intelligence and ambition and personality traits. Instead, Malcolm Gladwell argues in Outliers, we should look at the world that surrounds the successful, their culture, their family, their generation, and the idiosyncratic experiences of their upbringing. Along the way, Gladwell reveals what the Beatles and Bill Gates have in common, the reason you've never heard of the smartest man in the world, why almost no star hockey players are born in the fall, and why when it comes to plane crashes, where the pilots are born matter as much how well they are trained. The lives of outliers, people whose achievements fall outside of normal experience, follow a peculiar and unexpected logic. And in uncovering that logic, Gladwell presents a fascinating and provocative blueprint for making the most of human potential. So this is the iPhone 12 Pro, and I gotta say, I absolutely love this phone. The main reason is the triple camera setup in the back. The main lens has 420 megapixels, which is pretty good, and it's able to take some photos with reasonable sharpness. Now the zoom lens is killer. It's finally able to achieve its 20,000 optical zoom range, so I can finally, finally see the footprints on the moon. I was really skeptical of the moon landing, so um, I'm glad this lens confirms it. The ultra wide is great as well. It has a focal length of two millimeter equivalent now, so you can pretty much capture the entire earth with this camera. Now you can literally see the curvature of planet earth because of how wide this is. Overall, the iPhone 12 Pro is fantastic and I can't wait for them to add another camera next year. Now before I get into my personal thoughts and opinions, make sure to comment down below what you guys preferred the most. I'm really curious about which microphone you think sounded the best for my voice. And for sound quality, I'm gonna rank them number one through five. And I just want you to keep this in mind that this opinion and ranking are just my personal opinion and my personal preference. Uh, if you have one microphone that you've absolutely loved, make sure and, and you know go ahead and get that one. The best sounding microphone has to go to the Movo VXR10 Pro. Man, I absolutely love the fullness and richness that this microphone is capable of. Out of the bunch, I really liked my voice that was produced out of this microphone. It's rich, but not muddy. It's still very clear and clean audio. And the super cardioid pattern does an excellent job of blocking surrounding noise. And because of the nature of that pickup pattern, talking from directly behind the mic isn't as bad as well, especially compared to the Deity. And number two is Deity. It's a overall pretty good sounding microphone in my opinion. Compared to the Movo, it doesn't sound as bassy and oomphy and also not as clean sounding. The sibilants and the S's sound a little muffled as if I'm talking through a filter sometimes. It sounds a little like digital or noisy in a sense and it feels like there's some static to the sound it produces. It's slight, but overall this is a very good sounding microphone in my opinion clear yet full sounding vocals. And number three, man, this is so weird, but I have to give it to the Andy Cine M1. I was really, really surprised with this choice right here because it's really the cheapest out of the bunch. In terms of the sound signature, it's not far off from the Movo VXR10 Pro. It's just a slightly overall worse sounding than the Movo. There's a little bit more echo and surrounding noise pickup and it just doesn't offer as clean of a sound compared to the Movo. I feel like this microphone is a little too muddy in the low end, and because of that for me, I just prefer the sound Deity produces over this one. But for $29, oh man, this thing is amazing and doesn't fall behind from the competition at all. Number four is the Sennheiser. Now, this definitely offers the cleanest sound and the cleanest sibilance, but there's just no 
fullness to the voice. In my personal opinion, with my voice, I just don't like the sound it produces from this microphone. The sound is very clean. And hey, who knows, I might just be an idiot and all microphones are supposed to sound like this and the rest are all shit. Who knows, but just from my personal usage and experience, I just don't quite like the sound this creates. There are just more pleasant sounding microphones out of the bunch and for $99, this is a microphone that I will not choose. And number five is the Rode Video Micro. I'm not really surprised. It is the oldest out of the bunch. It doesn't sound bad. Uh, it just sounds the most like digitized to me and it kind of feels like I'm distant from the audio capsule. Um, you know, I'm not an audio engineer, so I can't use the exact terms. So like, I'm just going off the feelings of each sound it produces and uh, uh, this one is this one is the worst. Yes, yes, but slightly, but uh, yeah. At the end of the day, you know, each microphone is very good. I'm just nitpicking at this point. So I'm really, really curious on what you guys think. So yeah, please comment down below your thoughts and opinions and what you guys think. And if you guys go and end up deciding which one you get, make sure and comment below which one you decide as well. So in conclusion, I like the Movo VXR10 Pro the most. For $49, this is the best sounding microphone out of the bunch. It has a headphone jack it's a super cardioid pickup pattern um you know it's very good very good uh i have no complaints the only thing i wish is that uh you know i wish it was a coiled cable instead of a straight cable they have a cheaper option the vxr 10 for 39 dollars but it doesn't have a headphone jack and i think it's just a regular cardio pickup pattern so for 10 dollars more i definitely recommend getting the pro version the andy cine m1 is also amazing for 29 dollars I bet it's the best sounding microphone out there. Uh, it's great, I highly recommend it as well. The Deity is also pretty good. I definitely put it in my recommendation column. It's the most versatile out of the bunch. It sounds pretty good and you know, it has a back capsule and the, the second audio capsule to mix in with the channels is amazing as well. It's the most versatile out of the bunch and uh, for $89, I still recommend this. So the Sennheiser MKE 200 and the Rode Video Micro, uh, these officially go to my not recommended list. Um, you know, the Rode Video Micro is over five years old now. Uh, it's the OG, you have to give it props for it, but there's just better sounding microphones at this point. And the MKE 200, man, I really wanted to like this microphone so much. It looks so sleek and compact with its built-in windshield, built-in Ryko mount, plugging it from the front, and the blue cable, Man, this blue cable is the best looking cable I've ever seen, uh, but it just doesn't sound good to me. Uh, for me, I would honestly choose this last over all of this, even though it looks the cleanest, but for $99, for that reason alone, it's just a bit overpriced for me, and I simply will not buy this microphone over the rest. Man, that's pretty much it. That's the ultimate shotgun microphone comparison. Hopefully this video was helpful for you guys. Uh, comment down below which one you guys end up getting. Um, hope, yeah, hopefully this was really helpful. Uh, this took, this is nearly an hour of A roll. So I'm kind of tired. So I'm just gonna get going. Uh, like this video if you like this. And yeah, just follow me on Instagram. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more content like this and make sure to like this video for the algorithm and uh, keep us mock creator alive. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. That's some weird outro, okay, bye.